Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a crime thriller film, Headhunters. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the headhunter narrating his life rules as a prolific art thief. His first rule is to know everything about the people he will steal from, followed by his specific time limit of 10 minutes to get the job done. His next rules are, never leave DNA evidence behind, and always go with the simple forgeries to replace his stolen goods. Lastly, the headhunter believes that when you've been in the business long enough, you will either score a piece of art that is so valuable to support your retired life, or you will inevitably get caught. The headhunter wakes up in a luxurious house. He makes two cups of coffee and kisses his beautiful wife good morning. He narrates that his wife does not have a clue about where he really got his money. Continuing to describe his wife, the headhunter further explains that she's been hinting that she wants a baby, but he does not want to be a father. It is next revealed that the headhunter actually has a mistress that he sees regularly. After one of their trysts, the mistress tells him that they're going to a dinner tomorrow night and that she'd like to introduce him to someone. The headhunter panics and berates the mistress for overstepping her role. He ends things with her and walks out of her apartment. He goes to work and interviews a male applicant for a position in a GPS company. The headhunter asks him about his family life and his house. The applicant is confident right until the headhunter pointedly tells him that he will not be getting the job because he wasn't clever enough to cultivate his reputation first. The headhunter instructs the applicant to meet the company chairman the next day and turn down the job so that he will appear ambitious and sought after. The headhunter leaves his office and receives a call from his accountant. The headhunter warns the accountant that he is so close to being bankrupt due to his expensive tastes. The headhunter promises that he will get some money soon. He ends the call and contacts his partner next. He reveals that the applicant will be their next target and shares the details he gleaned from the interview. The headhunter's partner works at a security company, and his role in the heist is to disable the alarms in their victims' houses. They quietly meet at a cafe. The headhunter's partner hides a copy of the applicant's house keys inside a rolled-up newspaper and leaves it on a table. Seconds later, the headhunter steps into the cafe and grabs it. The headhunter dresses in black and prints a counterfeit of the art he plans to steal. Meanwhile, the headhunter's partner works on disabling the applicant's house alarm. He deletes all traces of his activity. Back at the house, the headhunter smoothly picks the lock and steps inside. He makes a beeline for the painting hanging on the wall and proceeds to replace it with the counterfeit he brought. He puts the fake painting on the wall and leaves. The headhunter narrates that his partner will then take the real painting from his garage and sell it to Sweden. The partner gets a 20% cut for every stolen art, while the fence, who handles the transaction, gets 50%. This leaves just 80,000 for the headhunter. He isn't satisfied with the small-time jobs anymore and decides that he has to aim bigger to sustain his extravagant lifestyle. Later that night, the headhunter arrives at his wife's gallery opening to support her. The wife excitedly tells her husband that there is someone she'd like him to meet. She introduces him to a former CEO, who recently moved from the Netherlands because he had inherited an apartment from his grandmother. He formerly worked for a GPS company, but has since retired. The headhunter encourages the CEO to apply for the manager position he is recruiting for the company. They agree to meet for lunch sometime soon. After the CEO leaves, the wife introduces the headhunter to a detective. He recognizes the man as the one assigned to solve the art burglaries he had done. The headhunter tries to play it cool, and the detective gives him a knowing look before he compliments his wife's expensive earrings. When they arrive home, the wife reveals to her husband that the CEO had asked her to authenticate a painting that he suspects to be the Caledonian Boar Hunt, a long-lost work of Rubens looted by the Nazis in Antwerp during the war. Apparently, the CEO grandmother had an affair with a German officer who died shortly after, and she kept the painting for years. If proven to be authentic, the painting is worth anywhere between tens to hundreds of millions. Excited at the prospect of a big payday, the headhunter contacts his partner to set things in motion. He gives him the CEO name and address, and the two plan to meet in the headhunter's cabin after a few days. The next morning, the headhunter surprises his wife with breakfast in bed. She presses him to talk about having children in the near future, but he avoids the conversation by saying that he has an early meeting. His wife refuses to let it go, and they get into an argument. He tells her that they will talk about having a baby soon, but she no longer believes him. After the headhunter leaves the house, he goes straight to the cabin to meet his partner. He instructs the man to go to Gothenburg and get a reproduction of the Caledonian boar hunt. The headhunter and the CEO will have lunch soon, and the headhunter will find out when would be the best time to break into his apartment. However, their plans get interrupted by his partner's lover, who comes with him to the cabin. After the lover leaves the room, the two resume their talk. The partner says he can't go to Gothenburg, because he will be filming his lover. 
The headhunter emphasizes that they only have a limited time to get the painting. His partner sighs in resignation and then agrees. The headhunter and the CEO meet for lunch. This time, the headhunter switches tactics and plays hard to get. The CEO calls him out on it, saying that he's only pretending he no longer wants him for the job. The headhunter acknowledges this and asks him more questions about his personal life. In response, the CEO invites him to a game of squash so they can really get to know each other. Afterward, the headhunter gets a glimpse of the CEO scarred back as they dress in the locker room. Then the CEO reveals that he got the scars when he was in the military years ago. He was assigned to a unit that specializes in tracking people. The CEO then asks him when he can meet the head of the company looking to recruit him. The headhunter replies that they can have a meeting after the CEO returns from his Amsterdam trip two days from now. When the headhunter gets home that night, he looks the CEO up on the internet. The initial articles show the CEO impressive track record at a GPS technology company in Denmark. Eventually, he stumbles into the CEO military past, reading about his special unit's success at tracking terrorist cells. The following day, the headhunter arrives at the CEO empty apartment to steal the Rubens painting. He finds it in one of the rooms and he takes it. On the way out, he stops by a window to look at a group of young children playing on the street. A faint smile appears on his face, and he seems to finally be considering having children. Caught in this newfound desire and happiness, the headhunter decides to call his wife and make amends. He calls her wife's number, and to his surprise, it begins to ring there in the sea of apartment. He follows the sound to the bedroom, where he sees his wife's mobile phone. He starts to suspect that she is having an affair with the CEO. The headhunter goes home and tells his wife that he is calling her. She answers that she might have left her phone in the gallery. The headhunter's face saddens when he hears his wife's lie. The next morning, the CEO meets with the company. He tells them all about his previous company's achievements, including a gel with nanotransmitters that can track anything and anyone. The meeting goes very well, and it even seems that like they want to hire the CEO on the spot. But the headhunter is angry about their affairs, so he tells the CEO afterward that they are still looking at other candidates. The headhunter goes to his car and calls his partner, and tells him that the headhunter has to sell the painting by tonight. On the way out of the parking garage, the headhunter encounters his mistress, who begs him to take her back. He refuses her advances and tells her to leave. The next day, the headhunter finds his partner dead inside his car. He moves the body and finds a poison syringe on the car seat. He dumps his partner's body in a lake, and to his surprise, he regains consciousness. The partner must not have been able to ingest all the poison, hence why he was able to stay alive. The headhunter drives the disoriented partner to his cabin. He tries to ask him what happened, but his partner is too out of it. They finally arrive at his cabin, and he carries the partner inside. The partner asks for a doctor, but the headhunter refuses. Things escalate, and the partner grabs one of his guns and points at the headhunter. In response, he also takes another gun and threatens his partner with it. A shootout ensues, and the headhunter accidentally kills the partner. The headhunter is horrified at what he has done. He is in shock, and he slowly takes the gun. It is then revealed that the CEO followed the two to the cabin with a dog in tow. He meets the headhunter, who gets scared he will try to kill him. The headhunter quickly goes to his car and narrowly escapes. While driving, he remembers that the CEO previous company specializes in tracking people. He frantically goes to the lake and removes all of his clothing to avoid being tracked. He puts on a spare uniform of his deceased partner. The headhunter drives to a nearby farm and takes shelter there. Despite his precautions, the CEO is still tracking him and is followed to the farm and killed the farmer who owns it. Meanwhile, the headhunter stows the painting away in the outhouse. Through a crack in the door, the headhunter sees the CEO coming for him. Trapped with no way out, he hides in the hole where the waste is dumped through the toilet. When the CEO leaves, he runs for the woods and circles back to the barn where he parked his car. However, the CEO had already disabled his vehicle. Desperate, he tries to escape on the farmer's tractor, but the CEO dog finds him and attacks. He manages to kill the dog, and he hightails it out of there riding a tractor. Now on the road, the headhunter gets pursued by a car. He thinks it's the CEO chasing him, and he eventually crashes. It is revealed that it was just a regular motorist. The headhunter wakes up in a hospital. He discovers that because he was wearing his partner's clothes when he was found, the police believe that he really is his partner. He is arrested for the murder of the farmer, and the police begin to transport him to the station. The headhunter then realizes that the CEO must be tracking him with a nanotransmitter gel. The police pull the car to a stop to flag down a stolen truck, but it is really the CEO driving it, intending to drive the police car off a cliff. The CEO succeeds, the headhunter is lucky enough to survive the brutal fall. 
The headhunter sees the CEO approaching the car and pretends he's dead. Satisfied, the CEO leaves the scene. The headhunter slowly crawls out of the crash, finding a shaving razor in one of the police officer's bags. He shaves his hair off and hides it in one of the dead bodies. He also swaps clothes with a policeman with an unrecognizable face in order to fake his death. The headhunter makes his way back to the city and goes to his mistress' apartment. But he discovers that she is actually working for the CEO. He forces her to tell him everything at gunpoint. The truth is that the CEO never left his company, but instead is working on getting the rival company's technology, which is why he was hellbent on getting recruited by the headhunter. He faked the painting, so he would have the opportunity to meet the headhunter. The mistress' role is to rub the nanotransmitter gel on his hair. After telling him this, she attacks him with a knife, and the two fall into a fast and furious fight rather than a hormone game. It ends up with the headhunter taking out a horrified gun hidden in his down and shoots his mistress to death. The headhunter flees the scene and goes back home to confront his wife. The wife admits that she had an affair with the CEO, but she had no part in the conspiracy to get his company's secrets. She begs for his forgiveness, and the couple reconciles. The next day, the headhunter visits the morgue to get his cut hair from inside the dead body. At the same time, his wife contacts the CEO and asks to meet with him. Afterward, the headhunter goes to his partner's cabin to clean up the scene. The headhunter hides behind the camera, waiting for CEO, while the CEO shows up before the camera and shoots the headhunter but misses. The headhunter quickly whips out a gun and shoots the CEO. As he bleeds to death, the headhunter explains that his wife asking to meet the CEO again was all part of their plan. She had switched the bullets in the CEO guns for blanks, which is why he missed. The headhunter leaves the house and walks to the car with his wife waiting inside. They drive away. The headhunter narrates the aftermath of the case. It turns out that he had cleverly framed his partner and the CEO as the ones responsible for the art burglaries, and that they killed the farmer and mistress before turning on each other. Though sensing the partner's death time is mismatching, the old detective in charge still closes the case quickly, due to the public pressure and his desire for fame, which caused the headhunter to get off scot-free. The movie ends with the headhunter and his now pregnant wife happier than ever. He forsakes stealing and is now focused on his job as a headhunter. Finally, he recommends the applicant from earlier in the film as the new manager for the company. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.